This is Near Death TV. I'm your host, Laura Ketchledge. I'm also an author. In 1979, I became a near-death experiencer. I chose to explain the truth I learned about the afterlife, reincarnation, and near-death experience through my fictional book series, The Near Death Saga. While dead, I was shown all human beings are shrouded in ignorance by design in order to learn valuable lessons in each incarnation. When you die, the artificial facade falls away and we awaken from the dream into reality. For more information, you can find us at neardeathtv.com. Please join us as we explore the after effects of near-death experience. Hello, this is Near Death TV. I'm your host, Laura Ketchledge. I'm also an author and near-death experiencer. I, par I parlayed my paranormal experiences after my own NDE into a fictional book series called The Near Death Saga. Afterwards, I became even more curious about the paranormal, out-of-body experience. So I created the show Near Death TV. Today, we are, our topic of discussion is out-of-body experiences. How do they parallel to a near-death experience? So today, I've invited a wonderful guest. Her name is Paula Lentz. She's the author of Driving Into Infinity, Living With My Brother Spirit. Hello, Paula. Hello. So great to be on your show. Well, thank you for coming here. Um, you've written a best-selling book that is currently on Amazon, um, Driving Into Infinity, Living With My Brother's Spirit, but you wrote it after a number of years after your life-changing experience. So can you explain the parallel of your out-of-body experience to a near-death experience and what happened to you some number of years ago? Sure. Well, you're right. I, I did wait a number of years before I uh, really came, came out, I'll say, with my story because the actual event where I had my out-of-body experience took place in 1983, and I just published my story in 2017. But essentially, the, the basis behind that out-of-body experience was that uh, my brother was killed suddenly in a car accident, and my brother and I were only four years apart. I'm the oldest. Um, but when that happened, I was just completely torn apart by the agony of losing my brother as you can imagine my whole family was. But the thing of it is, it's interesting to note that I had a precognitive dream warning about that event, but I didn't know what it meant. But in essence, it started a year before the actual um, accident of his. Well, let me and stop you here, Paula. I think you had psychic abilities or leanings Prior to this, because you're having these uh, foreboding dreams, uh, foreshadowing dreams of a tragedy, uh, don't you think? Well, I, I think that's, yes, possible. Um, the thing of it is, my brother and I essentially grew up together. I have a sister who's 10 years younger. Um, but I feel like, you know, number one, my brother and I, our personalities and everything were a lot alike. And I feel like this was probably something that was coming through to me from his energy, knowing how close that we were. And that's, I think, what I was picking up on, you know, what was coming. And, you know, perhaps I did already have uh, some sort of precognitive um, or psychic abilities, but, you know, it wasn't something I was... I guess, truly aware of, I guess. But this dream, okay. when it 
you know, the day that he died, then I knew what the dream was trying to show me, and that was the circumstances under which I was going to find out about his death. But there was no there was no mention of him or anything in that dream. It was just the, the circumstances and my reaction to that. So, you know, you're going through life. You have a close relationship with your sibling, a wonderful family. You're living a charmed life. You're an educated woman. You're a beautiful woman. And then all of a sudden, this, this tragedy turns your life upside down. Now, I've lost a sibling myself, and there is nothing, oh, gosh, there's nothing worse. So, when yeah. you, your brother passed away. Now, what happened? You're driving in the car. How long afterwards when this OBE occurred? How long after your brother had passed? Well, this event took place uh, five days after his death, three days after his funeral. And oh. interestingly enough, I was actually driving his personal truck because he was killed in a company truck. Oh, and, uh, you know, this was back in my hometown. My husband had just left me there for that following week, and he had returned to Houston. So this vehicle was the only one I had access to, and it just so happened that that day I had decided to take some funeral flowers out to the country where my grandparents lived. And so that's when this happened, as I say, three days after his funeral, and I'm driving along. I, you know, the total trip is about 15 minutes maybe, but as I'm driving along, all of a sudden, I realize that I am seeing everything around me. I have 360-degree vision, and I'm driving thinking, what is happening to me? And then at that moment, I realized I could see my brother like a pattern of lights, but it was you could still see his features. But he was at my right shoulder as I'm driving the, the truck. And he began to um, speak telepathically to me. And or words. Pardon me? When he was communicating telepathically, did it come in flashes like pictures or were there words? Could you audible sounds? Oh, it was uh, definitely words. It was as though he uh, were speaking to me. Oh my God. And um, he told me, as I'm still driving and I'm not understanding what's happening to me, but uh, he began talking to me, uh, as I said, telepathically. I could hear him in my mind. Mm -hmm. And he told me not to be sad, that he was happy and most of all, he wanted me to know a little bit of, of, you know, what life was like for him now. And he explained to me that he was on another plane of being. That's how he put it. And that it had simply been time for him to leave. And, and then at that point, I became aware that I was no longer in my body, but existed uh, you know, only in a state of consciousness, and I was no longer aware of driving. Uh, but he was still with me, uh, right there with me throughout this whole experience. Okay. But initially, I saw uh, this landscape very briefly. It was almost like a like looking at a negative of a picture, but. Um, with some outlines of trees and countryside, but, but that didn't last very long. And then after that, it appeared as though I were out in the middle of the universe to me. And uh, my entire focus at that point was on experiencing infinity uh, and eternity. And, you know, I first of all, experienced this wave of uh, peace that just came over me. And then secondly, there was a wave of all knowledge 
and I knew that, that I knew everything that had ever happened in the history of the universe. That's the way it felt. And then uh, finally was this huge energy of love that came over me completely. And at that point, all of these things, um, I just became one with everything I was experiencing. There, I knew then that there was no, nothing in the universe is separate. Everything is, is everything is one. And that oneness is with this energy of love um, that created everything and that provides us, you know, the vibration and so frequency. Do you, so do you feel that you really um, went to, you, when you're out of your body, you had um, a you were point of consciousness, do you feel like you went to the source, our higher self, and was wrapped in love? Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. And mm-hmm. and became completely one with that and, and one with everything that exists, you know, in in the entire universe. How did it just feel to let go of all your earthly worries and have that freedom? How did it feel for you? Did it feel natural, foreign? Or was it just something that, ah, I'm, I'm back? It was just that. It was, I did not want to go back because the the message I was hearing in my mind or in my consciousness in that state was that I was home and I wanted to stay there. <laughs> I had absolutely no desire to return to my physical body. So Paula, there was a real disconnect to physical reality. Once you left physical reality, it was like leaving all your problems or was it like it just didn't matter? It was a question of it just didn't matter (laughs) to go back. You know, what, what mattered to me and what I wanted more of was to you know, stay in in this uh, consciousness, in this place. But I do have to say that um, I realized that I was not, you know, I that I still had further to go, I'll say, to actually be in the space, um, you know, I don't know if you want to call it heaven or just... Uh, you know, one with the consciousness of the universe, but I knew that that this was kind of just the starting point. And so then when I began thinking, you know, I don't want to go back, I felt like I was wishing away that I knew within my consciousness that there was another step I had to go through. You know, there was more, another level, I guess you you could say, that I needed to get to in order to totally leave behind, you know, the physical life. And when I began this wishing away, as I uh, recall it, remembering that my brother is still right there with me, um, he interceded and he Mm -hmm. said, no, you can't go yet. It's not your time. And with that, it felt like he was uh, exerting his energy on my consciousness or being, and I began zooming back down toward my body, and I could see myself coming back into my body, you know, into the through the truck roof there. Now, let me just uh, uh, go over something so the listeners understand. You're driving down the road when this happens. I mean, that is amazing. So you're driving down, and I'm believing that, you know, time on the other side is not what time is here. So exactly. uh, you come back into your physical body. Were you going to crash the car? Or were you in the right lane? Was the traffic around you? I mean, it. It's like the most well, inopportune time to have something like this happen. But it's amazing that it did. Please 
share where were you in the car well when i landed back in my body um and was driving again i realized that not only had i been out of my body but during that time i had actually turned onto the road that took me directly to my grandparents house oh my gosh i mean there was a turn involved there and I was already on that road not too far from their house when that happened and so you, you know at that point, I was in shock but you know the other part of it was that I felt so good and I just felt like I was warm all over I knew that I had been with my brother um, and, you know, I just, and I actually looked at myself in the, the rear view mirror because I felt so warm and, you know, my face, it just looked kind of almost rosy, you know, and I just felt so good and totally at peace. It was like, yes, I landed back in my body, but it's not like, it's, it's almost like, um, part of me still remained uh, on the other side somehow uh, that was still feeding this, you know, energy into me. You know, and I got to my grandparents' house, but I didn't say anything to them about this whole thing. Again, I was just in this glow, um, and it was kind of interesting because to me, it was as though I were seeing through my brother's eyes how he saw us on earth grieving because, of course, my grandparents were just completely heartbroken. Yeah, I mean, it's a and, devastating loss. I mean, it's not a natural thing for a grandparent to outlive a grandchild. It's just so it's horrific. You're, ex you're exactly right about that. And, and so here I am. I'm observing them from this state of total peacefulness. And I'm seeing them, you know, crying as I'm giving them the flowers. And, you know, I just said to them, I said, well, I know that Donnie's okay and uh, and that everything's going to be all right. And, you know, I just didn't elaborate or say anything more. And, and for that whole day, um, you know, I just was in this state of peace and love and complete understanding of the universe and and life and, and everything like that but then after that day passed then i i did fall back into grieving for my brother even though i'd had this experience yeah because he's gone out of your life you know of yes and i just didn't know how to deal with that you know and as anybody would when they lose someone that they love um, but, you know, after that is when I realized, too, that my consciousness had totally been changed by this experience. So there was really a shift, and your, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but weren't your core beliefs turned upside down after this experience? Yes, um. I had been raised in the Baptist church and, you know, had always attended that. But when I returned from this experience, I, I knew that I couldn't return to, uh, I guess I'll just say religion, you know, these different churches, different types, different dogmas that went along with those beliefs and so forth and so on. Um, and I, because I just realized that everything was really about spirituality. You know, there's so many different yeah. aspects to spirituality than just being caught up in rules and regulations and dogmas that these different uh, churches have. And you know, understand people are at different places in their journey in life. And so I'm not condemning people who, you know, d go to different different religions or whatever, because everybody's on their pathway back to spirit. But for me, the change was just immediate regarding that. And 
uh, eventually I did find a church in Houston that I started going to that was all about the spirituality aspects. Well, I really, I really concur with your, your thoughts and, and your, you know, explanation. You know, I want to move on and now what are the after effects you've experienced? What are the psychic act after effects? Because I think your out of body experience very much paralleled a near death experience. That's why I asked you to come on the show. But that listeners really want to know about your after effects. Yes. Well, um, first of all, I think as part of this whole uh, uh, experience I had with my brother, I have to to emphasize that he continued to reach out to me. So I had all different kinds of things that were happening in my house. Uh, my husband witnessed some of some of those things. Um, yes. Well, one of the things that happened, he and I were sitting together in our TV room, uh, and this was probably I don't know, maybe five months after my brother's death. But anyway, we were in there watching TV and all of a sudden from the topmost shelf, which uh, these were really deep bookcases that we had in our TV room area, but from the very top shelf, one of our videos, we had a whole series of like videos up there from vacations and this and that, but one of our videos flew out halfway across the room where we were sitting and fell right at our feet. And we both looked at each other like, what is going on here? But, you know, the funny thing about that is it was Donnie trying to, I think, I really think that was meant for my husband because one summer when uh, my brother was working in Houston, he stayed with us a couple of months. And they would get in that TV room area. We had a video camera, and they would get in there and video these crazy, crazy things that they were doing. I mean, just you know, it's just for fun. And I think that that was a reminder to my husband about those they shared, and it was just so funny. Um, but you know, have you they, had anything with electronics? Yes. Well, you know, one of the you were asking about the after effects and. Uh, so when I drive on uh, along streets or freeways, as I'm driving, the uh, street lights will go out as I drive past, and then as soon as I'm past, they come back on. And the same thing happens if I'm out walking in the evening through the neighborhood, um, and you know, then the lights will go off and come back on, and. Uh, and that still happens even now. And I think that's probably the the major after effects related to, uh, you know, the energy. But one of the things that happened to me, too, was right after this experience is I began to hear people's thoughts as they walked into the room. And then... That's got to be somewhat disturbing. Yes, but that eventually faded. Maybe it was a case of I began blocking that. I'm not sure, but um, another thing was I learned to see people's auras, and I had a, a really astonishing experience related to that. Uh, there were a couple of people who worked for me. This was years later, I mean, and as these two people who work for me, we were just ha kind of having some downtime on a Friday, and, and I said, hey, did you know I can read auras? And they were like, oh, we'll read our auras. So, um, you know, I took a look at their auras, and the, the, the guy's aura looked just fine, but the other person who worked for me, her aura was really muddy looking, and I'd never seen anybody's aura look like that. But what did that told mean? Them, well, eventually what it was telling me uh, and showing me was that she had something very wrong in her body, uh, that she Ill. was on the verge of being, being ill. Mm -hmm. And 
sure enough, a couple of weeks later, she had to go to the doctor, and uh, she was just having a terrible time. And um, eventually she got through that. In fact, um, when she, after she had gone to the doctor and she came back to the office, I said, well, come in and tell me about, you know, what's going on. And so when she sat down in the chair across from me, all of a sudden I see this gigantic, deep purple aura around her. I wasn't even trying to see that. Now, purple <laughs> and, is often associated with healing, so she was in the process of healing? Yes, and here's the thing. With auras, at least in my experience, uh, most of the auras you know, that I see are, you know, you see these colors, but they're, they're transparent. Well, this, uh, this aura I saw was not transparent. And it was huge on either side of her body. It was not transparent. It was purple. And the other thing that started happening with this event was my eyes began watering, just like streaming tears down my face. And I couldn't stop it. And I looked at her, and she's looking at me like, what's happening? Because <laughs> she's totally unaware of this aura thing. And I told her, I said, listen, I don't know what's happening, but here's what I'm seeing. And I said, go to your office and call me on the phone. Maybe we can finish talking about this. Because she could see I just couldn't stop these tears from rolling down my face. Well, that is amazing. Um, I'd like to move forward. And I am very interested. I think everybody's going to want to know, what is your meld into spirit technique? So you have an, uh, developed an out-of-body technique well this is um, this is along the lines of like meditating but it is uh, it, it's not something that you you know where you go and you sit down you close your eyes you go into a meditation state um, it's it's meant to be used for example um, when you're like out walking around in a park or you know, if you're riding with somebody or, mm -hmm. you, you know, whatever you're doing in the house, I mean, you could just, just kind of tune into this and get into a different space. But I guess you could say it is, in, in a way, trying to get back to that out-of-body state. And so you're really, as you're looking around at, at your surroundings or whatever, it, it's a case of... Uh, looking at it from the perspective of everything is just blurring together. Everything you're seeing is just blurring away. And then it becomes like uh, points of light. You know, that all of these things in your mind's eye that you're seeing around you, trees, streets, your house, or whatever, if you can envision it just blurring into each other, so this is a conscious, con you concentrate to achieve the state, but is it an, I'm just, is it a form of out of body or it is a disconnect, some sort of disconnect? I, I really don't quite know. Well, when you get to the point where you're able to see in your mind's eye and, and feel and know that these things you're seeing in front of you as supposedly, um, you know, solid objects, but now they're all blurring together. And when you when you can see in your mind's eye, not only that everything around you is blurred and is turning into just light, and you think about that, your your consciousness goes on and sees the earth like that, and then the entire universe like that, and you're in this place of these particles of light or light just in and of itself, and when you're in that state mm -hmm. and you can reach that, you will feel the fulfillment and the oneness of everything. And so it is in that regard trying to get back to that state that I experienced out of body. I just think and, that's going to be an exquisite experience. 
Well, and then my my thinking is, you know, this is such – if people can get this process down um, – and, and use their imagination and see this happening and, and get that understanding that this is really what we are. We are all one part of this. And, the, you know, if you can do that, it's such a more natural um, way to connect wherever you are. You know, you don't have to go to the side, sit by yourself and concentrate or whatever, although it's better if you're not trying to necessarily do this in a crowd. But nevertheless, I think it can be done. Um, I think it's an important step that uh, that people would want to take. I, I just find it very interesting. Now, Janice Holden, Dr. Janice Holden, what did yes. she write? What is her, her, her information? I really don't know about her but you, you incorporated her into your book and uh, people would love to understand the research that she's doing. Yes, and uh, I have to say that I was actually, when I called her out of the blue, uh, and she is a, a, a professor, I didn't expect her to answer, but she did, and she didn't know me at mm -hmm. all. I was trying to get in touch through her to Dr. Kenneth Ring. But she asked me, well, why did, did I want to get in touch with him? And I told her uh, a little bit about my story. And on the spot, she offered to write this afterward chapter. Because wow, she said, how generous. She said, you have such an unusual experience. She said, number one, I've, I've never heard of anybody leaving their body for an experience like this while they're driving a car. <laughs> I mean, she was completely well, that, That's the first that I've ever heard of, but I think it's uh, phenomenal. Yeah. But um, so she she told me, you know, she said, look, you, you have all these after effects that are so much more like a near death experience in addition to having this shared death and out of body experience. She said it's like this big combination of things. And um, she talked about how it's an it was an empathic experience that I had with uh, my brother and which empathic is defined as showing an ability to understand and share the feelings of another. But um, she, you know, we talked about some of these after effects that uh, really mirrored those of an NDE uh, since, you know, this is whole, her whole realm of, um, you know, research and things that she's been involved in for years. But basically she, she talk, you know, she talked about the, my compulsion to have to, to read about spiritual matters. I mean, that was one of the things that right away started happening. I, I just was compelled to find all the books I could find uh, and read about spirituality uh, in, in all different forms. And that is an after effect of NDE. And I still do that. So here's the odd thing. I majored in English in college, so I've done a lot of studying of fictional writers. But once I had my experience, I have never gone back. I've never read another piece of fiction. Everything I've read has been about spirituality and, and experiences like this. So that's really odd. But um, there's also this whole idea, she said, about the gravitation away from organized religion and toward a deep secular spirituality. She said that's that's definitely an after effect like NDE. And, that's, that's, what I've, that's what I've been drawn to after my near-death experience also. Um, yeah, and, and she said there's no fear of what we call death. Had a, had an increase after that in precognitive dreams. Um, of course, the electromagnetic effects we talked about with, you know, the street lights and so on. But the fact, too, that I, you know, can see auras and that I had the ability to detect, you know, health issues in people. And then just that whole feeling of being connected to something greater. And so those were some of the, some of the after effects that she discusses. And she also had me take a test that was developed by Dr. Bruce Grayson. Uh, and again, another um, longtime researcher in that area. And it's meant to 
um, measure how deep of an, an NDE that someone has had. And she asked me ahead of time, she said, have you ever run across this test anywhere? And I said, no, I didn't even know such a thing existed. So she had me take the test, and I scored quite high on this test, um, which meant that I had had what was considered to be a deep NDE. <laughs> and mm -hmm. seven is like the lowest, like the, the lowest point um, that indicates you had some kind of experience. But I think on the scale, I was at 20 or something like that. Uh, and so, so she I talked all that. It was the, the, a wonderful gift your brother gave you. I mean, he reached out with love, with consideration. He pointed you in a new direction. Uh, and I have to say, even though it's been a long time since he's passed away, but the, lo the connection of love and spirituality towards him is just as strong as the day he was here. So yes, so and he, you a great he continues. He continues to reach out to me. I mean, he does this through um, photographs, uh, pictures that I have in my home office, and he will move pictures. He'll turn them down. Uh, and and actually, only recently, I've had two incidents instances now where I was actually sitting in here in my office and um, some t two different times uh, uh, one of these like invitation things I have in the bookcase flew across uh, halfway across the room which scared me because I'd, ne I'd never been <laughs> in the room when <laughs> he's moved these things I've always come in and they've been down or moved or whatever but now he's kind of doing it when I'm around, and that's okay. I I am okay with that now that I realize he is doing that. Well, Paula, um, that, that's extraordinary in itself that there's been uh, that type of a paranormal activity around you. Tell us, we need to know what your website address is and where can people find your book, Driving Into Infinity, Living With My Brother's Spirit? Where can they purchase it? Well, it's available uh, in, at Amazon, uh, Balboa Press, and Barnes and & Noble. And actually, uh, the first page on my website uh, tells people about the book, and it does list on there, and there's a link, actually, you can click on, um, but it does tell you where you can get the book. And, and if people want to quickly find my website, they can put into the search bar uh, paulalinsauthor.com okay. and that will point to that will bring up the my Wix site um, which has a much longer address than that but you do have to put it in the search bar but then not only does it bring up the website the, the Wix site but it'll bring up um, you know other presentations and things that I've done, some YouTube videos and, uh, and talks so there's, that you've been there's, asking your YouTube talks. Well, Paula, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. I think you have a must read book. So I'm closing well, the show. You. This is uh, uh, host Laura Ketledge closing out today's episode of Near Death TV. Thank you and tune in again.